brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. We are talking about back to school tonight on Healthy Living Tuesday right here. Once again, welcome back, everybody. I'm Jason Salas, continuing to give you information that you can use to keep you and yours as healthy as you can. But we are talking specifically about the vaccinations. That's a rite of passage. Dr. Yutkalan from Express Care is here. Welcome back. Thank you very much. All right, so th this should be part of everybody's ritual as their kids go back to school right alongside buying traffic keepers and buying new clothes that fit <laughs> and getting ready and doing homework and everything like that. Um, how much of a student population is supposed to get vaccinated? Well, everyone, you know, hopefully. Every, really, pretty much everyone, unless the parents opt out. Uh, but uh, generally, you know, there's a big bunch of vaccines that you need to give between ages four and six. Then there's a couple that you need to give around 11 or 12, and then one or two later on. But okay. most of them are in the preschool age. Which, at what age do you get MMR, and at which age do you get PPD? Okay, so your first MMR is at age one, mm -hmm. and then you repeat that sometime in the next six to six months or so at least. Measles, mumps, rubella. Right, measles, right. mumps, and rubella. And the TB skin test is also done for the first time at age one. And then depending on your risk and your exposure, it may be done more frequently later on. But certainly before you enter any new school, you need a new TB skin test. Mm -hmm. So PPD is later on in life. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, exactly, let's kind of like let, prospective students know and everything, what is the process uh, by which they are vaccinated? Is it a small needle? Is it a big one? Is it one of those, you know, like, like almost yeah. like the gun thing that the military uses when they, they yeah. bring in like 90 Marine recruits all, all at once and they... Right. So this is the one that brings fear to the hearts of all the children and also sometimes to the adults because they remember all the horrible things that happened when they were children. But really shots don't have to be painful and we try our very best to not make it a traumatic experience because we want children to not feel afraid of going to the doctor. So please don't frighten your child, don't tell your child it's going to be a big needle or tell them anything, but a positive thing that it's going to be a very small, tiny pinprick, that they're going to handle it just fine, that you're going to be there with your child, that you're going to help them through it, and it's going to be okay. We use a trick, we use ice, we use ice balls or ice packs to place on the skin before we give a shot, or we use a vibrating machine so that the area is either numb from the ice or numb from the vibrator thing so that children don't suffer pain. And there's no need to experience pain and drama when you're just getting a preventive shot. This isn't a therapeutic shot, it's a preventive shot. So to answer your question, most of the shots we give are inactivated uh, 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 viruses or bacteria meaning they're not live. The one that is live is MMR, the one that you just mentioned. That one is a in a, a attenuated, meaning slightly stunned, okay, uh, viral mixture. So when we give shots, you cannot get sick from the shot. With the live vaccine like MMR or also varicella, that's the chickenpox one, you can get slightly under the weather, but you're not gonna get sick from it. So that's a common myth that um, people sometimes have in their minds that by taking a shot you will get sick. You might, you might have an Im immune system reaction where your body develops a low-grade fever or you feel a little bit unwell for a day or so, but you cannot get sick from it. Mm -hmm. And for all you kids out there who are watching this right now, if you're in middle school, junior high, high yeah. school, whatever, and you are going out for sports, you do have to get your shots up and you have to get your records really, really current. That is a that it is, is a, it is a requirement and you know we're getting very cl close to the beginning of public school. Please don't leave it to the last minute, especially the TB skin test. We yes. see that every year because it has to be read 48 to 72 hours later and school starts Monday. Okay, so we covered you know what students should do and, and how they should prepare. Now let's talk about are there any tricks of the trade that you as a physician and your colleagues do you know when a student's sitting there, they might be a little bit nervous because mm -hmm. you know they're in a cold room and yep. you know they prob probably see the needle and you know like even the bravest of students get a little bit nervous a little bit. Skin. Yeah. What do you do to try and calm their nerves? Do you just say look in a different direction or count backwards from three and then hit them on two or? Yeah, <laughs> sneak up on them. Yeah, it works. Uh, right. Well, we do a lot of different tricks. Um, distraction is something you mentioned, mm -hmm. looking in the other direction, squeezing your other hand, tap your toe, wiggle your toes. These are all distracting things or it's speaking to them. You know, what are you doing this evening? Do you have any pets? Something like that. These are distracting techniques. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then we can also use the physical techniques of using ice or vibration to minimize the actual pain. And then of course we use the tiniest needle, the thinnest, smallest one that is appropriate for their size and age. Um, these things help. Um, 
there are also different locations that you can put the shot. You don't have to always put it in the arm and in, in thighs. You can put it in the uh, buttock area or areas where maybe they're not going to suffer quite as much. But the main thing is to reassure people that they can handle it. You know, they're much bigger than this tiny, tiny, tiny little needle. Yes, it may cause some minor discomfort, but they'll feel very, very proud when it's all over and they haven't freaked out or cried. It's a stumbling block and if you get past that you can handle anything. Mm -hmm. All right before we go to commercial I just want to say so now we've handled it from the student's perspective, mm -hmm. from the physician's perspective. What can parents watching this right now, what can they do to calm their child's nerves? And you said you know like I'll be there with you every step of the yeah. way but sometimes you know like students yeah. You know, they still so get nervous. To yeah, kid and, and people get impatient and they're frustrated and they've got lots to do, like you mentioned. They've got to still get the backpack and the clothes and whatever else for school, so they're like, hurry up. But, you know, just understanding that this is something that you need to um, be gentle with your child with, um, about, okay? So just take your time, try to be patient, try to um, uh, reassure them. Most of all, please don't hold your child down and force them and threaten them. Uh, these, these are very traumatic things that children will experience uh, and, and carry with them throughout their lives and, and they won't even know why they're so frightened to go to see the doctor later in life when they've had such a bad experience with vaccines. So we try to make it really very simple and fun. Maybe they get a sticker or maybe you'll give them a candy or something at the end of it all. But just try to make it a positive experience and remind them why they are there in the first place and how blessed they are to even have the option of having a vaccination because there are people in the world who cannot be vaccinated and remembering that we're giving these vaccines to prevent illness. I was I was actually going to say should they incentivize it because dentists have been doing that for years right. for decades. Right. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Thank Doc. You. We will be back in a moment. We're going to talk.